Hi there, I'm Lean, and this is the second video in the electronics test workflow series. In the first video, I ran through an auto-scheduled electronics functional test and gave you a quick overview of the test workflow. In this video and the following videos, I'll be digging a little deeper into each step of the workflow, starting with walking through the hardware setup. So as a reminder, here we have four units under test, they're really just generic electronics boards representing any green board you might need to test. And we need to run three different tests on each. The first test is a FET characterization one. This is a transistor test where we need to both source uh, a voltage and measure an, an extremely low drain current with high accuracy. This could usually be done with a DMM and a power supply, but one instrument can perform both the source and measure functions, and that's the source measure unit or the SMU. The second test is a filter test where we need to send a signal using a waveform generator and then read the filtered signal using an oscilloscope. And then the third test is a diode test, which can be performed by a DMM. So in summary, we need the four instruments, an SMU, a DMM, a scope or an oscilloscope, and a waveform generator. And since our goal is to have these instruments working together in a fully automated parallel test, Using individual box instruments is not ideal here. Though they're great, box instruments were built as standalone instruments, and once you need measurements from many different instruments at once, synchronization across instruments, or just resource management, that can start to become really difficult to do with box instruments. Which is why, for building out this tester, we are using PXI. PXI was specifically designed for automated tests and it's the leading industry standard for modular automated test. So if you're new to PXI, let's walk through what a typical system consists of. To put things into perspective, PXI is essentially a computer for engineers. Many of us have on our desk, our desktop PC or laptop, and some box, box instruments that we use, DMMs, scopes, power supplies, and others. PXI is essentially a combination of all those parts in one platform. We've got the chassis, which is the spine or the motherboard. It connects to instruments, handles the timing and synchronization, and the communication between the different instruments. And that's built in, so you don't have to waste time routing everything to external clocks to synchronize. The cha chassis go up to 18 slots. However, with the use of Mixi interfaces, you can expand to many different chassis. Now here, I don't know if you can see this through the behind the duts, but we have an embedded controller. So that means a controller that sits in the chassis. This is pretty much a full computer processor that runs a Windows or a Linux RT sitting in the chassis, uh, making it a standalone system. This gives you the ability to just swap out your controller with the latest one whenever it's released, keeping your test system high performing without having to replace entire box instruments. We also do have Mixi options that will let you use your PC or laptop as the controller. Now, like I said, the chassis can take in different instruments or modules, and we have a very broad portfolio of those. This includes a huge variety of instruments, all the classics like DMMs, scopes, waveform generators, SMUs, also DAC modules, sensor-specific modules, interface modules like CAN and GPIB, pretty much everything you need to customize a system to your test needs. So, for our test system here, like I mentioned, we're using an SMU, a waveform generator, a scope, and a DMM. But a specific module I'd also like to call out is in our system is the switch. The switch helps facilitate routing from our instruments to our DUTs. Uh, this is what allows us to uh, use one set of instruments to test four different DUTs in parallel. Now, one very obvious difference between a standalone box instrument and a PXI module is there's no display and knobs and dials to interact with. And that's what helps make PXI so compact compared to stacking up a bunch of boxes. PXI is software defined, which really gives you full control over configuring custom measurements. You're not limited to, ve to vendor defined measurements. So let's see how you would manually interact with PXI the way you would with a scope, for example. And that's by using NI's free software Instrument Studio. I'm going to open up both the waveform generator and the scope to manually run the filter test since they interact with each other. So over here, I have this open already. I've got the waveform generator and the scope. 
The connections that I've made is that the waveform generator is sending out the waveform through the filter. Um, the scope channel zero is receiving the original waveform, and then the channel one is receiving the filtered waveform. So I'm going to turn on the input, turn on the channel zero, turn on that channel one. And this is pretty much the equivalent of connecting that waveform generator, turning the knobs so I can zoom in and zoom out. I can change the volts per division. I can change the triggering. So this is basically a very quick demo of how I would use my PXI just to manually and quickly interact with the instruments the same way I would do with a box. So what we've seen here, PXI's performance makes tests go faster. Its high channel density lets us test more channels in one system. The switching also helps us maximize on that. And its modularity makes it scalable for future change. So if a design changes, we can just swap out modules. In the following video in the series, I'll walk us through the development of custom reusable code for each of the tests we want to automate. Watch the series today to learn how you can build your custom test system too. Thanks.